So today we are going to be talking about the time node, which is a quite interesting node uh, when it comes to uh, integrating your manual animation within the mash animation. So let's quickly get into it. So I'm going to start off with a cube and I'm going to make the height to maybe like somewhere like six. Uh, let's yeah. And anyway, let's make the whole depth to 0.5 and 0.5 for the width as well. Just so we have a very nice and thin cube and we will make the height to maybe like 50. So here we have this very simple and um, cube. So what I want to do is we want to add some kind of animation. So I'll choose some deformer to work with. I'm going to hit spacebar, deform, nonlinear, and let's use twist. All right. You can also go to deform, nonlinear, and here you will have all the nonlinear deformers. In the attribute, you'll notice that we have the functionality to increase the angle of our twist. So what I'm going to do is I want to keyframe this because if you'll notice if I hit let's increase some value and if I play this, this is a static attribute. So it doesn't add any sort of animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, right click here and set key and we'll go to 30 frames and we'll maybe add something like maybe somewhere around 200 set key. We'll go to 60 again and then we'll go to zero set key and um, let's just play this so we have something that looks like this and again we can do a similar thing where we go to 90 and then we go to maybe like uh, what was the value 200 so we can go maybe like negative 200 and right click set key and again we can go to 120 we'll make this a zero and set key and just so we have a little bit of extra number of frame we'll use 160 to work with perfect so we have animation that looks like this all right i'm going to use one more deformer with this and that will be the bend deformer again if you want you can go to deform and bend or if you click on bend you'll uh, have the curvature which is for curving your object and again we'll do the same we have we'll go to the first frame right click set key go to 30 and uh, we'll make the whole curvature to maybe like 90 or let's keep it a little low let's make it 80 set key we we'll go to 60 again we'll make it zero we'll go to 90 let's make it negative 80 and then again 120 and back to zero all right so let's quickly see both of our animation so we have something that looks like this all right now obviously there is some kind of uh, delay to the animation because of the whole bezier handle so i'm going to quickly fix that by going to the animation editor the graph editor and from here i can select both my twist and bin right you have both the animations select all the frames um, and just click on linear now if you play this we'll have something that looks like this actually it was looking better before so I maybe uh, i just want to maybe go through the animation one more time because i think we are getting some kind of a uh, bit more jagged animation i will keep it to this i think that will be fine Anyways, let's get rid of this. Let's select your cube here now and uh, we'll call this the cube. Okay. And let's go to mash. Click on mash. And we have the distribute here. I'm going to choose maybe like a grid. And uh, let's hit play. You have something that looks like this. Right. Now, what we want to do here is since we have a lot of different clones of mash. Uh, of our cube using our mesh and what we want to do is we want to transform this animation and obviously we cannot go back to our main cube and rechange the whole animation so what we want to do is we want to make some changes so here i have a time node i can click and add time node right and what time node does is you have animation start and you also have animation end so my animation actually ends on 120 so i can keep the number to 120 but here's the main question when does the animation start so let's say our animation usually starts on the first frame what i want to change is it starts somewhere like 20 or let's say 15. so what uh, time node is doing right now is since we have animation the first set of animation from 1 to 30 seconds 
Well, the animation part that we have on the 15th frame is being applied on the first frame. So it's shifting those frame numbers backward to the first frame. And now your animation will start from this point and forward. As a, even though my animation actually ends since my 15 frame has been shifted back and obviously my animation is ending much quicker here, it is still repeating the same animation again after the frame ends. So that way I'll have animation continuously going again and again and again. So I can select a looping point uh, if I want and I can obviously uh, stagger the frames which is not something I want to do. You can use the random stagger. But the interesting part that you have is um, is the time scale. We'll get into that um, in a few minutes. Anyways, you have the option to use velocity. Uh, you also have the time to use the simulation time for whole frame numbers and so on. And the reason I was saying that you have, uh, which is uh, time scale is pretty interesting here because you have a default value of one and you have the same animation going on and on. If I randomize this time scale, you will start to notice that uh, they individually start to behave uh, differently having the same animation with the whole thing. So if I just move this, there you go. I can reduce this to make it slower or faster. And now you have randomized animation with a lot of different clones with the same animation uh, that you have applied. So I can increase my clones here regardless of uh, how many clones I have. It will still adapt to it. It will still have that randomization going on and so on. All right. And just uh, let me just remove this just so I have a longer period of animation. So it won't again have that glitchy ending and there you go again I can just randomize this maybe add a bit more time scale here I'm just trying to figure out a perfect frame yeah and there you go so yeah you have random seed if you don't like the pattern from here and again you have the strength for it you want the strength for for animation frame or animation trigger you can set it to that and again you have the overall strength of the entire time node you have the random strength as well you can use that uh, as well with the time scale you can randomize this for the strength and if you want to use a strip synth and you can also create a very nice fall off so it will only affect the area that you want and yeah so there you go so it is quite interesting using your time note because now i have more control over my animation and imagine if you wanted to have this kind of animation going on in your scene and you have to animate each and every object again and again instead you just have to animate only one object and just mash it across the whole thing I'm gonna break this connection real quick and uh, yeah so that's it uh, for the whole time note this is how you use it so again keep this in mind uh, regardless I have used deformer but you don't have to use a deformer uh, it can be anything like if you have a simple animation of this cube which is sunny here then it's going somewhere here and uh, maybe in somewhere in between it's going a bit higher let's key this and you have something like this and again you can go to mash and uh, you can use a distribute grid and again use the time here and if you play this real quick uh, let me just delete this again. Maybe it start to glitch out again. Shift H. Alright, there you go. Let's match this. Let's hit the distribute node. And uh, for some reason, it's not picking up. Let me just do this again with the expression. Uh, so I have like. Let's use this. All right, select this. Go to edit expression. Let's use this, and uh, maybe let's use a time value to a hundred. Create. All right, there you go. All right, so let's smash this again, and we'll use 
my grid. Yeah, let's use three by three. And we can add time node here. And uh, yeah, so there you go. And I can start whenever I want to start the animation from. And uh, yeah, you can control the entire animation. Again, you can randomize this. And now you have random queue spinning across your entire scene. So yeah, it's pretty versatile. Uh, when it comes to, I can go back here, I can select this X uh, as well. And let's hit the expression. I can add again, we'll use the time multiply, but let's have some variation. We'll use 120 here. And let's create this and I can use the rotation Z as well. Let's hit equals to time multiply by maybe 140 and semicolon and that's it. So as you can see, as I'm applying more expression here, more animation to my original cube, I'm selecting my original cube here, not the mesh. Uh, it's continuously updating the mesh input as well. So we don't have to worry about how much animation, if you have uh, animation applied before hitting the mesh or after, even though if you have applied the mesh, you can still go back and change or you can add more animation to your object. It will still work and now, this is what you have it. So if without the random uh, time scale, you have this. Well, I think a randomization is just far better than having no randomization. It will just give you a little extra in your scene. So you can just have one like butterfly or maybe insect or some leaf having some kind of animation and then you can just copy it and mash it, create thousands of instances with the random animation going on. All right, so that's it with the time node. I hope you have fun with this note and I'll see you in the next video.